dogs like the Bloodhound have been in existence for centuries used by noblemen to track game and the ritual of the hunt. The dogs take their name from the care taken in recording their ancestry or bloodlines so they were blooded hounds. Today's bloodhounds descend from the Saint Hubert Hound created in the 8th century France to follow difficult trails in search of treacherous games such as wild boar. William the Conqueror brought Saint Hubert Hounds with him when he conquered England in 1066 and it was there that the bloodhound eventually blossomed some 800 years later. The Victorians were famous for creating dog breeds as we know them today, as previously there had been no breed standards and rarely any record keeping of bloodlines. The rise of dog shows and a widespread interest in keeping of fine or rare animals helped to save many breeds from extinction. The bloodhound was one of them. His ability as a man trailer and the patronage of Queen Victoria, herself a noted dog lover, saved him from falling into oblivion. Man trailing with bloodhounds became a popular leisure activity and it didn't take long before the police recognized the bloodhound's usefulness in tracking down criminals. These days the bloodhound is still a favored member of many law enforcement teams and his testimony is even accepted in court. The ancestors of today's collies worked as herding dogs in the Scottish Highlands driving cattle and sheep to the market. They may take their name from a Scottish breed of black-faced sheep also called the collie. Not much is known about their origins, with shepherds being more interested in working ability than in keeping pedigrees or stud books. The collie might have remained a humble, little known herding dog, but fate had a different plan. Queen Victoria, who frequently vacationed in Scotland at Balmoral Castle, fell in love with collies in the 1860s. Royal patronage caused a demand for the breed. They went from being the helpmates of humble shepherds to the cherished companions of the wealthy. By 1877, collies were being exhibited in the Westminster Kennel Club show and again they were taken up by wealthy dog lovers including JP Morgan. Today, the collie ranks 38th among the breeds registered by the American Kennel Club. The bloodhound is calm by nature but by no means lazy. Forget that image of the sleepy hound on the front porch. This is a working dog capable of trailing a scent for hours or even days. Life with a bloodhound puppy can be best described as bedlam. Bloodhounds are master chewers and can easily destroy walls, doors and furniture if left unchecked. They will also eat anything in the hope that is food, including but not limited to rocks, socks, toys, plastic wrap, kitchen towels, etc. The list goes on and on. It's not unusual for this breed to require multiple veterinary visits or even surgeries to deal with intestinal blockages. Constant supervision and a good crate are essential to raising a bloodhound puppy. A bored bloodhound with energy to burn will create his own entertainment. He's a champion hole digger and can remodel your lawn in no time flat. Given the slightest opportunity, he will escape your yard to follow an intriguing scent and wander for miles before realizing home is nowhere to be found. He's not able to backtrack, so it's best to prevent breakouts by enclosing your yard as thoroughly as if it were Alcatraz or Fort Knox. The Bloodhound is renowned for his gentle nature, but beneath that placid exterior lies a tough, stubborn, independent hound. Training a bloodhound requires skill, cunning, and what some might call bribery. Positive reinforcement, particularly with food rewards, is the way to win a bloodhound's heart and mind. Force, on the other hand, will get you nowhere. When it's employed, the bloodhound will simply don the mantle of passive resistance and refuse to do anything. For best results, begin training your bloodhound when he's young and still somewhat malleable. To fulfill the bloodhound's need to work, channel his amazing scenting ability with long, slow walks or hikes, permitting him to sniff out and explore trails. If possible, teach him to man trail, as he's born to do it after all, and get involved in your local search and rescue organization. If nothing else, teach him to play hide and seek around your house. His skills will come in handy when you lose things. When you walk your bloodhound, he must be on a leash, otherwise he'll take off when he finds a good scent, going at a pace that you won't be able to match. Bloodhounds have no street sense and will follow a trail into traffic or onto train tracks. Pulling is second nature to this very strong dog, so good leash manners are essential. Start teaching them as soon as you bring your puppy home and work with a trainer that the lessons are in fact taken. Before we continue, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it would mean a lot. Thanks. The Collie is a herding breed which means he is smart, quick to learn and very tuned in to his people. While he's nowhere near as intense as the Border Collie and the Australian Shepherd, the Collie still needs daily exercise as well as training and play that will challenge his mind. Collies respond best to consistent, reward-based training and they enjoy the attention that comes with performing, whether doing tricks or competing in agility, obedience or herding events. The Collie can also be an excellent therapy dog, tall enough to stand at the bedside for petting with a calm and welcoming personality. 
On the downside, the Kali is vocal with a bark that can be exceptionally irritating. If left to his own devices, he can become a nuisance barker. He's not trying to tell you that Tim is in the well, he's telling you that he's bored, bored, bored. The Kali is family oriented and should live in the home, not out in the backyard. He also has a tendency to nip at heels and play, an earth sign of his herding heritage. While it's interesting to see instinct in action, it's not a behavior that should be permitted. It can be frightening to children and annoying to everyone else including other animals. Collies learn quickly and are eager to please but they get bored with repetitive obedience training. Find different ways to change your routine and keep them interested. His skills as a herder require him to make some decisions independently of people. Learn to appreciate that independence and work with it not against it. In bloodhounds, the most serious and potentially expensive health problems are hip and elbow dysplasia, eye conditions such as entropion as the eyelids roll inward, extropion as the eyelids roll outward, and a condition known as dry eye are potential concerns. In other health problems that may affect the bloodhound is hypothyroidism, a common hormonal disease in dogs in which the thyroid gland doesn't produce enough thyroxin. Not all of these conditions are detectable in a growing puppy and it's impossible to predict whether an animal will be free of these maladies, which is why you must find a reputable breeder who is committed to breeding the healthiest animals possible. Collies can be affected by a number of genetic health problems including multiple drug sensitivities from a mutation in a multi-dog resistant gene MDR1. Dogs with this mutation can have serious or fatal reactions to a number of common drugs including the common heart form preventive ivermestin and lopramide, a human anti-diarrheal agent sometimes used in dogs. Screening not only your puppy's parents but also your dog for these conditions is a life-saving necessity. The test is simple and requires only a cheek swab. Eye problems are also of serious concern in this breed. One of the most intractable is progressive renal atrophy. Kali eye anomaly is a group of eye disorders ranging from minor to serious. They are present at birth and may be detected in puppies as early as 5 to 8 weeks of age. Unfortunately, Kali's can also be affected by a number of health conditions for which there are no screenings screening tests. These include epilepsy as well as a condition called bloat in which the stomach expands with air. This can become a more serious condition, gastric torsion, if the stomach twists on itself, cutting off blood flow. Bloodhounds have short, easy care coats in black and tan, liver and tan, or red and need only a weekly brushing or wipe down. That's where the easy part stops. The wrinkles must be cleaned regularly and kept dry to prevent infection. Be prepared to wash your bloodhound's face thoroughly after every meal and wipe his mouth after he drinks water before he shakes his head and sling water and drool everywhere. Use a rubber hound glove to brush the bloodhound's short coat, remove dead hair and distribute skin oils. You can brush the dog daily or weekly depending on your tolerance for finding dog hair around the house. Bloodhounds shed seasonally in the spring and fall. A tool called a shedding blade can come in handy during that time to help remove the excess hair. Bloodhounds typically don't need baths very often if they're brushed regularly. They have a distinctive odor that most people either love or loathe, so if you're a loather, don't think you can bathe the smell away. It's an inherent part of the dog and it's something you must live with if you want a bloodhound. Both varieties of collies have double coat, meaning they have a thick, softer undercoat and a thinner, flatter overcoat. The rough collie has a beautiful coat that looks like it needs significant care, but it doesn't. A thorough brushing every week or two will keep the coat healthy and tangle free. The smooth collie's coat is a piece of cake to care for. Brush him weekly with a rubber curry brush or a soft slicker brush to remove dead hair. Rough collies go through a heavy shed twice a year called blowing coat. During this time, brush him daily to keep all the loose hair under control. The smooth gully doesn't blow his coat but he sheds more throughout the year than the rough gully does. The rest is basic care. Trim the nails as needed, usually once a month, and good dental hygiene is important. So brush the teeth frequently for good overall health and fresh breath. Check the ears weekly for dirt, redness, or a bad odor that can indicate an infection. If the ears look dirty, wipe them out with a cotton ball dampened with a gentle ear cleaner recommended by your veterinarian. It's best to introduce your dog to grooming at an early age so he will accept it gracefully. Alright guys. Which one do you think you'll get? Tell me down in the comments.